The following program may contain coarse language and scenes that may be disturbing to some viewers. Their very public, very damning allegations rock the entertainment world. So that just does not happen to one other young woman coming up into that company. They toppled a cultural icon and implicated one of the most prestigious theater companies in Canada. I'm Joanna Rumeliotis. On this edition of The Fifth Estate, the stories from the actors, the internal emails and secret audio recordings that reveal how the Soul Pepper Theatre Company handled past allegations of sexual harassment. Pulling back the curtain on a culture of silence. If all the world is indeed a stage, and all the people on it are merely actors, it seems inevitable that in theatre, the lines between fantasy and reality blur into one another. You're a bloody <laughs> nuisance! <laughs> sorry, 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 I'll be good, I'll sit and... And in a world where the most intimate, most vulnerable lines are crossed in the name of art, the power of what is real and what is not lies in that question. But for the women who set off an explosive sexual harassment scandal, there is no doubt what lurked behind the veil of artistry. The idea that um, I have to allow a man to press his genitals into my buttocks to be a good artist or to be open to being a good performer or creating a good performance, it's, it's bullshit. Th this idea that we have to put up <laughs> with this, this kind of behavior and sexual harassment to be a good artist, it's just, it's just not the case. Actresses Kristen Booth and Trish Fagan felt their lines were constantly crossed. A lot of <clears throat> behavior was excused. I mean, I could say there's, there was the code of silence. Yes, when you work with this director, there's humiliation, there's belittling, there's abuse, there's mocking, there's, they can be lewd, they can cross the line, you know, sexually. Fagan and Booth shared their story with CBC News two weeks ago. They're the actresses suing Albert Schultz, alleging their former boss and mentor was also their predator. Schultz was the artistic force behind Soul Pepper. For nearly 20 years, he helped build it into one of the most acclaimed theatre companies in Canada, a company the women also claim did nothing to protect them. No one else was saying anything. You know, uh, members, of, members of the company that had been there for years, with m m many more years experience than myself or Trish, nobody, nobody pulled us aside and said, hey, you don't have to do this, you don't have to put up with that, that's not okay. The thought of saying something was unfathomable to me because I thought well, nobody's going to care or they're going to be like us, nah, it's, it's just the way it is. It's just the way it is, you know. When they and two other actresses came forward, their refusal to remain quiet, their damning accusations, unleashed an already simmering Me Too movement in Canada. These four brave actresses, who were all in their early 20s when they met him, were taught from day one to understand that in order to succeed, they would have to suffer in silence. I think this is the, the message that keeps me strong and the message that I hope other people can hear, is that Soul Pepper, as it is, is not a safe environment. Our investigation started here, when this line was dropped, a challenge to take a closer look at Soul Pepper. I think the catalyst for it all happening was the, the thing that happened with Laszlo Martin, which is a whole other story that I encourage you all to look into deeply. And I think that was a catalyst for starting this, this change. And so we did take a deeper look at the thing that happened with Laszlo Martin. Marton was already an internationally acclaimed director when Albert Schultz brought him to Soul Pepper in 2000. 
He helped Soul Pepper become a commercial and artistic success, and he was a celebrated force. Richard Lamb is an actor who worked with Martin. Albert talked all the time about how Laszlo was his mentor, his teacher, you know, and a, and a mentor and teacher to many of the senior artists at Soul Pepper. So we were told and expected to give him that respect. As a sound designer, Richard Farron also worked with him for years. Laszlo was someone who Albert respected and was close to. And, you know, I think he, he brought a bit of cachet, sort of European um, uh, cachet to the company. Spring 2016, Soul Pepper was getting ready to stage A Doll's House, a play about the awakening of a middle-class wife and mother in an oppressive society. Martin was set to direct. Farron had been called in to work with him. I usually worked on all the, uh, the productions directed by Laszlo, so, you know, I just expected that Laszlo would be directing and that uh, that was the plan. But then something strange happened. The plan suddenly changed. Just when rehearsals were about to get underway, a new director was called in to replace Martin. The word from management, it was all a problem with paperwork. The reason given was that his, uh, his foreign artist visa had been turned down. And so that was the official reason given at the time. But all this time, I had no idea why Laszlo actually wasn't there. What staff didn't know, two women from Soul Pepper had gone to the company, alleging Martin had sexually harassed them. The first story emerged in the summer of 2014. Word quietly spread that Martin had sexually harassed a young actress. Richard Lamb heard the whispers. I heard that while working on a play with Laszlo, um, Laszlo grabbed her butt and when she confronted him about it, he said, it's my right. It's his right. It, that's what he, those are the words I recall being recounted to me. I was disgusted. I was very disappointed. I was very angry. We've learned in the fall of 2015, the woman and Leslie Lester were out for drinks. Lester was the executive director of Soul Pepper at the time and Albert Schultz's partner. In a letter to the Fifth Estate, Lester says the woman was struggling with what to do and that she convinced her to file a formal complaint. The woman wouldn't speak to us directly, but we've also learned Soul Pepper did an investigation in early 2016, and that in exchange for a copy of its report, the company asked her to sign an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, compelling her to not speak publicly about it. Lawyers for Schultz and Lester say their clients played no role in any arrangements. Hi, thank you for speaking with us. We really appreciate it. And there was a second woman. She wouldn't speak to us on camera, but agreed to talk on the phone. So you say he grazed your breasts and touched you between your legs. In 2016, she told the company Martin groped her during a soul pepper trip to Hungary. Who did you complain to? Staff aren't told about her allegations either, or that Soul Pepper had quietly let Martin go because of the accusations against him. Instead, the visa story remained the official explanation. Schultz sent this email to staff announcing a necessary change to the creative team and that due to complications with his work visa, Laszlo Martin will not be able to direct the pretense continued, and a year later, Schultz even invited some staff members to a dinner party in Martin's honor. Schultz informed them Martin was ill and asked them to record tributes that Schultz would deliver personally to him in Hungary. One of the people invited to that party was Trish Fagan, who says for years she had her own problems with Schultz. Did you go? No. How did that strike you as a... As Crazy, a... but not surprised. <laughs> Why weren't you surprised? I was just, I just remember opening it and going, what? <laughs> and I, because I, I just, I knew how 
much Albert loved Laszlo and I knew that, it, it seemed to me that it, he was probably devastated at having to fire Laszlo and this was his way of saying, I still love you and he wanted to round us all up to do that with him. You and to do I that. was not gonna do that, no, absolutely not. Why wouldn't you do that? Because I was asked to go and honor a man who was fired for sexual harassment at the home of the man who sexually harassed me. For six more months, the secrecy would continue and the Laszlo Marton story would have stayed hidden behind the curtain. If not for something that happened thousands of kilometers away. Lila Sharozdi is a famous theater actress in Hungary. But her latest role is the face of the Me Too movement there. This past October, Sharozdi shared her own disturbing experience when she was a 17-year-old aspiring actress. Vele volt egy barátja, és a nagy rendező föltérdelt a kocsiba, elővette a nemi szervét, és instruált, hogy puszíjam meg. A barátja vezette az autót, fölértünk egy kietlen helyre, őt én sírtam, hogy ezt nem szeretném, és a mellettem ülő Férfi meg kielégítette magát. That director was Laszlo Marton. At first he denied her allegations, and then Sharozdi's story became a national news sensation. Nagyon nagy ö, lavinát indított el az, hogy kiírtam a Facebookra. Ö, rengeteg nő jelentkezett nálam személyesen a messengeremen keresztül jelentkeztek be hogy velük is történt hasonló eset, és több mint, hát körülbelül, nem tudom, 10-15 nő egyszer csak ott volt, hogy ez velem is a Marton, velem is a Marton. No legal action was taken against him, and Marton later apologized in an open letter for any unintended harm he inflicted. The news of the Hungarian scandal made its way to Toronto and quickly circulated on social media among Soul Pepper artists. In a matter of days, after nearly two years of remaining silent about Marton, Soul Pepper management called an emergency company meeting, they said, in the name of transparency. The Fifth Estate has spoken to several people who were there, and we also obtained an audio recording of the meeting. On the stage were Schultz and his wife Leslie Lester. So was the board chair. We kept the investigation and its result confidential in order to protect the complainants. Let me be perfectly clear, Lazo Martin's behavior was completely unacceptable in human terms, was a violation of Soul Pepper's past and present policies and codes of conduct. Schultz also added that he regretted going to Hungary to see him. The meeting ended a few minutes later. I'm here for you. We are here for you. We're not going to take questions now because we want everyone to reflect on what has been shared today. Richard Lamb was in the room and says he felt he was listening to a scripted message that rang hollow. There was no reckoning. There was no reflection. At no point did they say, did they reckon with the idea that they had told us that this person was their mentor. There were no questions about whether that should be looked at and thought about. Instead, they referred to him as Mr. Marton, which I had never heard anybody refer to him as in my entire career there. And it just seemed so fake. Soul Pepper may have thought it had turned the page by addressing the Marton story that way, but there were unintended consequences. Soul Pepper would inadvertently have a hand in its own descent into scandal because that meeting was a turning point for Fagan. When we come back, life is about to get a lot worse for the people who run the show at Soul Pepper.
So it sounded to me like it was more trying to hide the problem than bringing it out to the forefront and dealing with it. I just didn't know if I believed that things were being handled the way they should. On the outside, Soul Pepper was one of Canada's most vibrant theater companies. But inside, a darker drama was unfolding. A star director had been let go under mysterious circumstances. But there were also stories circulating about Albert Schultz, the company's co-founder and celebrated face. Over the years, these actresses claim they endured unwanted touching, sexual comments, and sickening moments. Kristen Booth and Trish Fagan were fresh out of acting school when they started working at Soul Pepper in 2000. Soon after, they say, Schultz asked them to play a disturbing game. A warning, their description is graphic. What did he ask you to say? I or... would fuck so-and-so. So your boss is asking you who would you fuck. fuck? Yeah. And what was going on through your mind when he was asking you that? I was just trying to keep up. And I thought, it's the theater. I guess this is what it's like. <laughs> Apparently it was an acting exercise in the, in the sense that if we convincingly, whether we wanted to or not, whether it was true, if we convincingly said, I will fuck whoever it was, if we convincingly said it, then the, the exercise was proving the point that we, we were good enough actors or, or convincing actors. But it became very clear during the start of that exercise that Albert's name was gonna come up in the list of these actors that we were to say we would fuck. And if it would be, also became very clear, the right answer. Was yes. Was a convincing I would fuck Albert Schultz. They had buried those moments, put them away. But then came that company meeting last fall. After nearly two years of silence, Soul Pepper finally told staff the real reason Laszlo Marton had been let go, sexual harassment. For Booth, hearing Schultz condemn Marton was the final straw. Here was Albert, you know, saying, we don't condone this behavior. Um, we don't, we, we got rid of him because we support these women. And reading the statement that Soul Pepper released to the press, made me sick to my stomach. And I said, this is, this is hypocrisy at its finest. And I said, I can't, I can't be silent. The hypocrisy, Fagan says, was too much for her to stomach as well. And she confronted her own silence, writing a list of every encounter with Schultz that she says left her feeling violated. It's difficult in that you just internalize it. And so I think it, it just has a, a, an effect on you emotionally. I think in my case, I uh, would get depressed. And I think I had, I can see now, you know, um, bouts of depression that I had throughout my career that um, after writing everything down and seeing it more for what it was and deciding to do something about it, uh, I could start to feel that lift in terms of what I've been carrying. But where to go in a company they'd lost faith in? And so Fagan reached out to Booth, and then other women came forward. Initially, she wanted to go to Soul Pepper's board, but soon they all realized that was not enough. We all carried a similar kind of pain and I thought that it needs to be a bigger conversation. I thought it needs to be a conversation and I also thought that quietly going through the board and trying to do it as subtly as possible is I guess sort of um, in keeping with the code of silence around it. Why not um, why not go to the board? Why not stop why not start there and stop there? Uh, well I think that the Lazlo Martin um, example is the best way to answer that question. Um, Laszlo was accused of various um, sexual assault or abuse. Um, he was asked to leave. 
um, the company and he did, but there is a culture there that still celebrated Laszlo. That was a big reason why I came forward. So going to the board, um, in the internal makings of Soul Pepper, they're broken too. It's why the women say they felt they had to file lawsuits in civil court, suing Albert Schultz. The four women allege 30 incidents spanning more than a decade that included unwanted touching and sexual comments and claim Soul Pepper's culture let it all happen. The allegations have not been proven in court. Alexi Wood is the women's lawyer. My clients believed that they had no recourse. There was no one at Soul Pepper that was going to step in and protect them. This was a culture that was rampant within the company. This was not a well-kept secret. And all of that message comes from the control at the top, which is the board of directors. In a statement to the Fifth Estate regarding Laszlo Martin's departure, Soul Pepper said management identified a risk that if the reasons for his termination were shared with the broader community, it would jeopardize the anonymity of the women. Soul Pepper also said the past weeks have been painful, but that it's confident it will emerge stronger. The company has severed ties with Schultz and his wife, Leslie Lester, and is promising a period of renewal. In the past two weeks, the storm surrounding Albert Schultz and Soul Pepper has rocked Canada's entertainment world. He says he plans to defend himself vigorously. And while there have been silent protests supporting the actresses, there has been harsh judgment too for the damage the allegations have caused, especially to Schultz's wife. In a letter to the Fifth Estate, Leslie Lester says, I am devastated to have learned of the allegations now made against Albert and the insinuations through the ensuing media frenzy which has followed, destroying my life's work. Fagan and Booth say the consequences weighed heavily on them, that speaking out was not an easy decision, but something deeply personal pushed them forward. They both have daughters, and when it came down to going public, they say it came down to them. It was actually the clincher for me as far as making the decision in my own private moment at home that, okay, I'm going to take the first step and start speaking about this because I, I didn't know how I would explain it to her later on when she's older if I hadn't. When I kiss my daughter goodnight, it's so clear to me that this has to be spoken about and, and that the veil has to be lifted and the silence is what breeds more predatory behavior. The more we say, stay quiet, the more it will happen.